Well, welcome to the program, Alice. I'm, uh, I'm glad to have you. I know we've been uh, talking about this for some time, so it's great to finally get you on. Yeah. Uh, hi, Sam. And nice to see you as well, virtually, at least. As, as I said, uh, I, I just wish I was in your setting there. We're going to have to uh, have a swim afterwards because that, uh, that backdrop looks amazing. Sure. Come over. <laughs> Alice, I always start with asking my guests, uh, what, what made you come to Treasury and why did you choose Treasury as your career? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, when I graduated from college, I, I started working in the accounting department. I wasn't in the treasury department. So, but I was part of the consolidation group, uh, does have a lot of uh, cross-functional uh, project and uh, medicine activities with the treasury department since I was responsible for intercompany transactions for Latin America and APAC. So I know the treasury manager very well. Uh, then two years into my um, accounting role, I kind of got bored a little bit. I kind of don't think that's going to be my long-term career um, goal. And at that time, the treasury manager approached me and said, hey, Alice, we have a newly created role in treasury. Uh, are you interested? Honestly, you know, at that age, 23, 24, I said, I have no clue what the treasury does, uh, but sure, why not? I, I'm open to try something new. So that's how I started. So I, um, it was an internal transfer, a transfer from an accounting team to the treasury team. Uh, my first uh, job, my first you know, responsibility in treasury was FX back office. Um, I still remember the first day I need to confirm FX trades, I was overwhelmed by the zeros behind Euro, you know? So, uh, so it, I, it was a pretty intimidating experience on day one. I need to confirm like hundred million Euro FX settlement. So yeah, so that's how I started in treasury. It, ironically, uh, Alice, most of my listeners would say the same thing and they treasury found them and, and they fell into it as opposed to having a, a defined career path there. Just for the listeners, um, you spent your first six years. So the internal move you just mentioned was with Cisco. Um, so yes. you spent six years growing, um, you know, starting in accounting and then growing into treasury with Cisco. You then moved to Matson Technology where you spent a couple of years. Um, you then spent eight and a half years with AMD right. uh, before moving to your current role uh, or your current business, which is Workday, where you've been for nearly nine years now and grown through to be the treasurer. So just a little background for the listeners there. A, a great career path um, to get to be the, the treasurer of Workday as you have. What would you say have been some of the career highlights in your mind so far? Um, by looking back, I think the first uh, highlight I will say is uh, take the risk, right? So I was in accounting. Uh, treasury was a unfamiliar territory for me at that time, but I take the chance as I, you know, I try it to see how I like it, right? I think that's the, uh, that's the first line highlight I, I will say is, you know, when there's opportunity, grab it, right? Um, regardless whether you can do it or not, just grab it at that time and then try it, try it out, especially at the early career stage, right? Um, then uh, I think after I joined the treasury, I had a great opportunity to try many different things. Uh, within Cisco or at Madison or at AMD. You know, it, the company provided me opportunities. You know, I started with FX in Cisco, back office, then transferred to the cash management team, you know, doing, um, you know, um, international cash management for a couple of years. Then after I spent, like, as, as Simon mentioned, I spent six years in Cisco. It was a great company. It was a great company, a lot of learning. Uh, learn, uh, trans, you know, be able to do many different things within a team. But at that time, I was like, you know, I have been in Cisco for six years since the day I graduated from college. I know that it, this is a big world, right? There are a lot of companies out there. I don't want to stay comfortable. So I think that's the number two highlight is after a few years when, especially at early stage, don't stay too comfortable, right? Try different things. So that's how I moved to Madison Technology, which is a much smaller company. Uh, it was a different line of business. It was semiconductor. It was smaller. Uh, I was there for two years, uh, but, be, but be able to 
um, have a managerial role rather than a individual contributor back in Cisco. So it gave me a different type of experience, right? And it provided me a managerial experience for two years, even though the, 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 the function, the job itself is not as complicated as Cisco, but it provided me a different perspective, different career training. Um, after two years, I figured out, you know, I need a, um, for me to further grow my career in treasury, I need a bigger company um, setting. Um, so that's, that's why I joined AMD. Um, that was a very exciting eight years. Uh, as you guys recall back then, um, Semiconductor has been going through roller coaster up and down. So when I joined AMD, it was at, it was at its high, right? So there's a you know great um, you know international market penetration, um, new uh, have fun have foundries, you know. Then it went through downturn. Then you have bad investor, you have uh, sell off, you have merger divestor, merger divestor, right? And then the company getting into cash uh, distress, right? So. Uh, been through all that. So it, then it, even though the company going through roller coaster, it actually provided me a great opportunity to step into capital market because the company's cash, right? So the company is in, in, uh, was in financial stress. So we, I'd be able to have an uh, opportunity to involve in um, capital raising. So that's kind of opened up another uh, territory for me kind of naturally say, oh, the company had that need. So that's how I gained my first capital um, capital market experience, their financing, right? So, um, and it, it was great. You know, I, in AMB, I experienced something I never experienced in my whole treasure life is how you live day-to-day -day cash management without a credit facility, even a soft line, right? So that's kind of never, everything cash-based. That's all, it was a very stressful period, but it was great on my resume, right? So I see that down, I, I know how to manage a treasure function when, uh, it's, when the company uh, at the, the bottom, right, uh, had, need a, had a critical cash needs. So, so it was great. Um, and, uh, but after eight years in AMB, I asked myself the question, say, what's next, right? So I'm not ready to retire yet. Uh, I still want to have another, um, you know, step up in my career. So I said myself, say, what, what's next for me, right? Do I continue to stay in this company and go vertically? Or should I look for opportunity outside this company, right? I'm getting comfortable again. And again, I'm getting comfortable again, right? Um, so, and I think it's time for me to step out of the comfort zone. Um, then at that time, Workday's opportunity presented to me. Um, and when I first heard about it eight years ago, I was like, oh, who? You know, so I never heard about that company. And it was a, at that time, it was when the recruiter approached me, it was still a private company. So, and it was software, it was a private, uh, a private ready to go IPO, ready to be public, right? And that they want to hire someone to start a treasury department since after IPO, there will be a lot of cash coming. So, and that they have, you know, entities globally, they want to hire somebody professional to handle that and set up the treasury function. So to me, that at that point, it's a it's a kind of a turning point for me, right? I will, I will say, I, I can I have a choice, continue to be conservative, you know, stay comfortable in AMD um, and, uh, you know, continue to move forward and have a career progression in the, in, the current, in the current company, or I take a chance to join a pre-IPO company. Who knows what's gonna happen to that company, right? And it does not have, I don't have any team there. And I'm the only one in the treasury department. I need to start everything from scratch. Um, so, um, so I was like, that's, a, that's kind of a, um, I, I, I battle, I debate a little bit, right? Um, but I remember I went on campus interview uh, in Workday and uh, I, I met with you know, the, the leadership, you know, the, uh, the, the treasurer back then, the CFOs, the other leaders in the, in, uh, in, the, um, in the company. I was really impressed by the leadership there, right? So, and, uh, and uh, all of them all had a great career in other companies. 
And on my way back, I asked myself the question, I was like, it is, it's like all of them had a such great career in other companies. It must be something in this company attracts them to have them make that decision, right? So I was like, if those people can make that decision, I think I can follow them. Since I, I, I think they are super smart, they have a view, they have the, they have the vision, they have the strategy. Um, so I was like, I take a chance. Uh, to to join uh, to join a company, and uh, and that that's it. That's where I, that's how I started my career in workday. Um, and I think um, the, the 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 other highlight I will say is when you join a. Um, I think throughout my career, when I, when I talk about it, I, I feel like I I'm, I'm even though in treasury we are very risk take uh, we are very risk averse. But I think in terms of a career, our manager, our career, we need to be a little risk taker, right? You need to, if, if you feel too comfortable in a, in, in a certain place, I think that's a time you need to looking for new opportunities. Definitely, so I, think, yeah. I think it's the risk takers that, that, uh, that get the good careers, isn't it, uh, Alice? And, and it is counterproductive or counterintuitive rather, because treasury is definitely risk averse, as you say. Yeah. You know, yeah. Can I ask you then, has networking been something that you've been quite targeted and, and really had, had an approach to throughout your career? Um, yes, uh, as you know, Treasury is, um, in Treasury you have, if you from like customer service perspective, right? You have internal customer, which are uh, various departments through cross-functional within the team, we work together, right? And then we also have very important external partners we can work with, which is financial institutions. It can be banks, um, it could be uh, brokers, you work with on, on the investment or on insurance broker and all, all, the, all, all those network, right? I think it's very, very important for treasury professionals to maintain a healthy and a good relationship with people internally and externally. Right. Um, and also the peers you have in other companies. Um, so that's why I think, you know, um, join treasury um, organizational attend, AFP attend, Euro finance, you know, have your own network or, or other network within some, you know, peer group setting. I think those are very important. And what about the, the mentor side of things, Alice? Um, you, you said you've gone from big companies into smaller companies pre-IPO. Have mentors been a, a part and have they been formal or informal if you have had them? I have to say I, I never had a formal mentor. You know, it's all informal, right? So all the managers I work for, uh, I consider they are all my mentors um, in terms of regardless of whether it's a professional level or you know personal level. So we there are uh, managers I work with. We develop like a personal uh, relationship as well, right? So we we even talk the days, right? So I think I I honestly I don't really have a formal mentorship with anybody, uh, but I think it's all informal and it just come naturally. Uh, I, I think. But once like I said, once you step out, right? So I think I, I still remember one of my manager give me. Uh, give me a very good advice. She said, um, the, the, for, from her perspective, the success factor, there are two C's, is a curiosity and a connection for, 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 for anybody, right? I, I totally agree, right? So, and so that's why I think the connection is very important. So I always keep, keep that in mind. So, but yeah, all my mentorship is informal. What's the one piece of advice that you wish you were told early on in your career that you know now, Alice, uh, that you'd like to relay to the listeners? Hmm, uh, that's a good question. Uh, well, I should know uh, early on. Um, be more open, try new things. Um, so I, I have to say uh, when, I still remember, you know, when I was in, uh, when I was young, um, so I I really when I first started a uh, treasury, I really like cash management. You know, I, I really like the banking structure. You know, um, uh, you know the the international aspect of the cash management piece. I, I really like the, that piece. Um, one piece of uh, treasury I I'm not a huge fan of um, is insurance. <laughs> so, 
so I was always kind of hesitated to push back on, on insurance, right? And uh, but um, then in certain period of my career is that just all to me, it's like you have to take it. You know, so, uh, but the, at that time it's like, oh my God, I, I wish I had a chance to do that a little bit earlier. So I'm more embraced to doing it, right? So, you know, I think that's the thing, don't set boundary for yourself. You know, there are things like, oh, I think I like it. I think I'm good at this, right? I'm not good at certain other certain things. Um, but don't set that much boundary, you know, just be open, be more open. I think I'm pretty open, pretty, you know, flexible on doing new things, but I still have my boundary. I wish I can not care about that too much, right? So I, I still remember my first manager in Cisco, um, he told me the, the career advice he gave it to me. I, I still remember this day. That was like so many years ago. He said, Alice, for the first three to five years in your career, don't um, go for money, don't go for title, but do as much as things you can and learn as much as you can for the first five years of your career, right? So you, you should experience many different things, whether you think you like it or you don't like it, you need to try out. So I, I think I will give the same advice to the people out there who is new in treasury um, or still early stage, try new things, you know, be, be flexible. Even if you don't think you can, you you'll be able to do it or you like it. Try it, you know. Try do a maybe a temporary project. If if there are other people doing project on something and need help, step in, you know. And and then step in, try a little bit and then have a taste of it to see whether you really like it or not, right? Um, so I, I think that's yeah. That, that's Alice, I, I have to say that that's I've talked about this so many times, and it's fabulous to hear that that was the advice you got given. I, I say all the time, treasury titles don't don't worry about them get the experience that you need to get. And what you've just said there is try as many new things as you can um, mm -hmm. because you don't know what you don't know. And yep. the more experience that you get and the more you try things and don't worry about titles. Like the, it, the, the problem is for most juniors out there, they want to be a treasury manager. They're a treasury analyst and they want to be a treasury manager. When you ask them, why do you want to be that? It's like, oh, I want to be a manager. You know, I want to manage people. It's like, well, a treasury manager doesn't manage people. It's just a title. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's funny because it, once I get away from that and realize it, it's just about experiences, don't worry about titles and don't worry about money. Like the money will come when you've got the experience. So I, I love your advice there. I think it's absolutely fabulous. And all of those listening out there that are junior and a treasury analyst, listen to what Alice just said. Um, <laughs> can I ask you then, Alice, I mean, speaking of people, what, what do you look for when you're recruiting your direct reports and the people in your team? Yeah. Um, very good question. I think um, every treasury department is different, right? So to me, when I started in Workday, um, by looking back at all the established um, treasury department I worked for, um, there are things I would try to avoid. Is um, used to be there was this old reputation is treasury department live in its own ivory tower, right? So I remember when I went, um, one time I went to interview in a company, uh, the accounting manager came to me and I said, I don't like treasury department. I was like, what happened? She's like, I don't understand what they are talking about. <laughs> you know? And they just talk to bankers and I don't understand what they're talking about. I, I, I have no idea what they are working on. So I don't like treasury people. I was like, oh my God. You know, so, so from that moment on, I have a different perspective on treasury. Yes, you know, I, there are, it's because we, we use a lot of lingos, which accounting people, other, other finance people may not understand. Derivative, interest rate swap, hedge, hedging, you know, it all sounds very fancy, right? But we have to remember what is the value of our treasury department. It's not to be unique. It's not to be like, oh, I know all those lingos. I work with bankers. No, you know, we, our purpose is we need to serve the business need. What is our role, right? So when I joined Workday, um, my vision of the treasury department is I don't want the treasury, first of all, I don't want the treasury department to be isolated. I wanted us to be 
a advisor and a consulting a consultant to the management to the leadership and to the other business uh, other 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 side of uh, other business team right and uh, and i also think and that's one we want to be business partner right so and the second is i don't think treasure department should be an operational center it should be a more strategic and analytical group you know um we we are not apt and we are not a payroll team. We need to differentiate that, right? Um, so, so that's kind of my two vision when I when I join the work day. So, uh, and the third vision I have is digital technology, digital transformation, digital treasury. So, so those are the three main things I I focus with, with, for my team. So, all the everybody on my team is um, highly engaged all cross-functional, great partnership with other teams. And other teams love to work with us. You know, I got positive feedback from us. Oh, it's great to work with the treasury department, regardless of legal department or AP department or even IT teams. It's always pleasant to work with treasury people, right? So, so we are a bunch of very nice people, high efficient. Um, we, uh, we always have a curiosity mind. Uh, sometimes I say, sometimes you need, you need to be a little nosy, right? So like it's sometimes, I, I was like, to help, to, for us to be able to help other people be an advisor, you need to know what other people's working on. How does our work impact others versus how others, other people's work impact us, right? We need to be nosy sometimes. We sometimes we need to butt into other people's business a little bit, right? In a, in a positive way, in a nice way, right? So we are all team players who cross-functional and we all love technology. So there's a thing is everybody on my team know we hate manual work. I don't like Excel spreadsheet, even though we have to live with Excel spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything we can automate, we will automate. So all of us, none of us are programmers or anything like that, but we all have this you know, automation and a technology mindset say, hey, can we do this more easily? Can we do this more efficiently? Um, so, so that's my team, you know, that's the kind of the characteristic I'm, I'm looking for, you know. Yeah. And just touching on that, you know, with technology advancements and with automation like you're, you're doing, how do you see that changing the role of the treasury team and, and the treasurer moving forward? Yeah, te I think a technology enables my vision of a, um, instead of an operational center, it should be a um, strategic and analytical department to be a advisor and a consultant, right? So in reality, when you think about, it, there are still operational work you need to do. There are bank accounts you need to manage. There are bank account signers you need to do. There are KYC refresh you have to do, right? There are daily cash position you have to take care of. There are, you know, 56 international entity out there you need to, you need to make funding to, right? So there are, those, there are intercompany settlement you gotta do. There are FX settlement you gotta do. There are a lot of ground works, operational works, but so, so I, I think when I joined the Treasury Department, when I started, um, you know, in, in Workday, um, I feel the internal percentage, I think initially we probably spent like 75, 80% of the time on operational related activities, like 25% on probably analytical and the strategy related activities, right? So because there is just so much work, you need to get it done. You don't have time to digest a number or take a look at it. So does that make sense? What does it mean, right? We, we don't have that time. We don't have that bandwidth. But, but technology we're able to do is it give us the, the platform for us to gradually reduce the percentage of time we spend on the operational side. Then we have the extra hours we can spend on the projects, the strategy stuff, right? So my goal is to move the percentage from 75, 25 to at least to 50, 50 for now and for the next few years. Then when we get more technology, when we get more mature in the future stage, ideally it should be 25% operational, then 75% on analytical and a, and a strategy activities. So that's kind of my, uh, my vision, right? But for us to get there, technology gonna play a very essential role. Definitely. One last question for you, Alice. What do you think makes a successful treasurer in the eyes of the C-suite and senior management? Uh, 
from a C-suite perspective, for a successful treasure is you get them the cash whenever they need it, right? Uh, for whatever activity activity they need to do, right? So I think that's that's kind of a treasurer's most important job is just get the liquidity ready, manage the working capital portfolio, right? Um, and then the second is manage the risk, right? Whether it's an FX risk or interest rate risk, and also give, uh, give them advice, you know, um, you know, in terms of be 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 an advisor role. Like I'll talk about, it's like in terms of M and A, uh, if there's a if a company has M and A activity, in terms of like, uh, how should we do that from a financing perspective, right? How what should be our long term capital structure look like, right? If the company gonna expand internationally, hey, how what are the things we need to you know, be a, pay attention to like the foreign currency exposure, geo, geopolitical risk, um, things like that. I think it is valuable in the in the scenes for the C suite. Definitely. Well, fabulous, uh, Alice. Thank you very much for your insights. It's been great chatting to you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Simon.